King Saul, he's been rejected by the Lord. He has an army, and his army has a general. There's two men I want you to get introduced to today. Pay attention to me. The first general's name is Joab. He's the general of, of the first, is, is David's general. And then there's a general by the name of Abner, who is Saul's general. Two armies, two men, two leaders, two generals, and two armies. Saul's army has a general by the name of Abner. David's army has a general by the name of Joab. Now, Abner, uh, Saul has died. And Abner, the general of Saul, sets up a puppet king. He sets up his son Ishbosheth. You can read this story uh, when you get home. He sets up a puppet king by the name of Ishbosheth, who is Saul's son. He really controls him, and he likes the setup. But Ishbosheth rebukes Abner, his general, for going into one of his daddy's concubines. Because going into one of his daddy's concubines was a power move for the throne. And that Ishbosheth knew that. Abner, angry over the rebuke of Ishbosheth about this concubine, decides, and he's really, he's been looking the picture over and he knows the game's up. He knows that God is moving. And he's a, Abner's, uh, Abner's a funny study in Scripture. He'll show you how a human mind works and manipulates religion and everything else to his own benefit. And Abner decides that he's going to switch sides and he's going to switch from the army of Saul and Saul's family. And he's going to move over to David's side. So he sends messengers to David saying that I want to be entreated to thee and I want to swing. And he said, I'll bring the people of Saul over to your side uh, if you'll receive me. So David arranges a meeting with Abner. To bring all the people under the influence and the leadership and the dominion of David, it's a political and a, a, a coup in the country. Now, Joab, during this time, David's general has gone on a warring trip. He's gone off on a, war, uh, a trip of war. He returns in the ch chapter 3 and hears about the fact that David has had his arch enemy in for a conference. And this arch enemy is Abner, and it just incenses Joab. There's two things why it made Joab angry. Abner is the man who killed his brother Asahel with the backside of his spear. So he's got vengeance and hatred in his heart toward Abner to start with. The second thing is that he knows that Abner is one of the greatest men of war that there was in the whole nation of Israel. And he says, if David is meeting secretly with Abner, is my position in the kingdom at risk? So there's two things he's got against Abner. One is he killed his own brother. Joab, he, Abner killed Joab's brother. Second is, he sees him as a threat to his power and position in the kingdom. So Joab does something. Joab sends messengers to Abner and brought him back and took him aside. And I can just see him saying, Abner, I want, I want to talk to you privately. And Abner's feeling all good because he's been received by David. He feels real good about the situation. Everything's going as planned. And Joab pulls Abner over to the side over there. And I can just see him taking his hand, laying on his shoulder, and getting in his ear like this, and turning his head this way, and he says, let me tell you something, he's going to whisper a big secret, you know. And he pulls out a dagger and runs it right up to his fifth rib, right up into his heart, twists it, cuts it, jerks it out, and the Bible said that he fell down in his own blood and he killed it. Now, David said that he lamented. It grieved him. And there were reasons that it grieved David. But in... The Bible in the New Testament says that the things written in the Old Testament were written for our learning, for our, for our admonition, that we ought to learn something from it. I want to, this morning, if we would learned something from Abner's death, in examination of this thing and learning from the Scriptures, Abner should have been very, listen to me now, Abner should have been very, very cautious of Joab. Do you listen to me? When you get ambition in your life, and when you get to thinking, you know, you get these all these conniving ideas, you get this scheme all figured out, and you've got this route that you're going to take to get ahead in life, and, and how you're going to get to where you're wanting to go, and get done what you want to get done, there are inhibitions and cautions that you will lose in the process if you're not careful. There, you'll start dealing with people and dealing with things that you ought never deal with that's going to get you in trouble. He should have been very cautious about Joab. And he knew, he should have thought, you know, I killed this man's brother. And there's never been a resolution about this. I ought to be careful around Joab. Second of all, he should have been concerned about the jealousy that Joab would have had for his position of leadership. And he should have realized, number three, that Joab is a man of war. Abner was foolish 
Now David asked the question in his lament over Abner. He said, died Abner as a fool dieth? How many here wants to die like a fool? Anybody interested in here dying like a fool? Well, Abner was foolish in trusting Joab. There are people you ought not trust. But I want to tell you something this morning. Joab is a picture of Satan. David is a picture of Christ. And Abner is a picture of you and me. And the Bible said that the devil cometh not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And what Satan's job is, is to deceive you into thinking that he's got something worthwhile for you to listen to. And when he gets you in position where he wants you, then he's going to lay the sword to you. He should have been, he, Abner was foolish in trusting Joab. He was foolish in letting his guard down. The Bible says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Abner was foolish in allowing Joab to deceive him. He was foolish in listening to Joab. And he was foolish in even getting close to Joab. David laments about his death and says, Died Abner as a fool died. Why did David say that? Because How did Abner die? He died as a fool because he died, and this is a message, he died, listen to it, in deception. He died... In deception. Now I want to ask you the question this morning. Will you die in deception? Now I'm not just talking about uh, dying lost. I believe a Christian can die in deception. I mean I believe he can get so messed up and get so close to the devil. That his life is cut short. His potential for life is ruined. That his testimony is ruined. That his family is ruined. That his home is ruined. His life is ruined. He can die in deception. Why did David say that? Because he died in deception. He died as a fool died. I want to ask you a question. Will you die as Abner died in deception? The Bible said in Revelation chapter 20, verse number 10, the devil that deceived them. Think about that. The devil that deceived them. In Proverbs 14, verse number 8, the Bible said, listen to this verse and go study it when you get home. The folly of fools is deceit. Think about that. You better run that through your heart a many times. The folly of fools is deceit. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 12, it says to a father and to a family, Beware lest any man spoil you. In other words, beware lest any man rob you of everything that's precious to you through philosophy and vain deceit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 13, it warns of false prophets that are deceitful workers. In Luke chapter 21 and verse number 8, if Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13, that in the latter days they'll wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 9, it speaks of the devil that deceiveth the whole earth. As I said, David, I want you to see him as a type of Christ. Joab is a type of the devil. And Abner, a type of man in a general sense. Every person needs to get serious in some time in their life about the subject and the issue of being deceived. How many has ever been deceived in this congregation? Boy, I'll tell you, I have. how many has ever been deceived monetarily? I mean, they told you you was going to get this, this, and then they told you, I mean, you just suckered for it because you just, it just sounded so good, it sounds too good to be true, and it was. Somebody has said, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Amen? Now, I'm saying to you this this morning that there's areas of life that you can be deceived about. I would say, first of all, you can be deceived about sin. You can be, there is, I, it's amazing to me the power that sin has to destroy, and yet how easy it is to be deceived about sin. The Bible said that in Hebrews chapter 13, lest you be hardened through the, lest your heart be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. I'm here to tell you this morning that sin is deceitful. 